Oh uh, yeah. Was well, speaking of uh, Elon, are there any are there any Elons updates? You want to talk about this? You want to do you want to do this? Let's what? do this. Oh, Self driving. Oh, is it coming? Oh. This Are wasn't we on our list, driving? guys. We're, we're, we're going to call an audible here. So Elon Musk <laughs> said that uh, self-driving is coming soon. And is this on. an article from two years ago? <laughs> yeah, is this yeah. an article from four years ago? <laughs> yeah, let me just uh, Google some stuff so you guys can read from our friends at Electrek here. Uh, Elon Musk says, very close to level five autonomy, complete. Um, this was a virtual conference that he was attending. What was the name of it? World Artificial Intelligence Conference. Wake. Oh. Um, <laughs> no. It was in Shanghai, but virtual. So is it really in Shanghai? <laughs> wow. Are we in the mind. internet? Yeah. <laughs> Where is it if it's nowhere? Um, okay. So Elon had some statements here about full self-driving, saying, I'm extremely confident that level... Uh, or essentially complete autonomy will happen. I think he's saying level five there. And I think will happen very quickly. I think at Tesla, I feel like we're very close to level five autonomy. I mean, I'm sorry, but this sounds like another billionaire. <laughs> That's just, mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't the most eloquent statement. Um, then he <laughs> added, I think that I remain confident that we will uh, have basic functionality for level five autonomy this year. Now, this is like all the rage in the news lately. Um but I'm just not sure I understand why, because I feel like this is not new at all. Right. Uh, he did mm -hmm. have more explanation of it that says, we'll be able to do it, basically. So, what, I mean, the discussion is an interesting one. I don't know if we've talked about it in a while. But what do you guys think? Is is level five autonomy coming? Uh, what, like, what's the timeline for that in each of your guys' heads? <sighs> this is worse than trying to predict, like, COVID outbreak, because it's it is such like a... <laughs> exponential thing you know where it's like you think and it can go either way because it can be way off it can either be like it will surprise you with how like all of a sudden this clicks this clicks this clicks you know because there's so many cars on the road there's so much data there's so so many things being solved and figured out blah 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 and it can go the exact opposite way too where it's like you know uh we're, there's still so much to do and then that tail will, will shoot up or whatever but uh I don't know. Um, I, I'll say I, I'd i rather do like a prediction by the end of the year what the car will be capable of on December 31st, 2020. Is that fair? Or can or do you want us to say like, when can you really just sit back and let the car drive? Give me both. How about that? Um, my prediction is full blown. I can sit uh, l not not legally, not legally, but the car is fully capable of doing everything, everything, including like parking at a parking, all that stuff. I th I think that's twenty twenty five. Is that geofenced or non? That is all vision like based. Okay, but like um, off roading in the desert in Baja, California. Uh no, that's like normal operation, non off road. Okay, like so, like there is GPS available in this scenario. Yeah, 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 and it's like, and it's like what an Uber would need to do, an an Uber driver, Uber driver replacement. We'll say that. In, not... I, I, I'll say 2024. I'll say 2024. Okay, so somewhat geofenced, we'll say. Yeah. Right. Because like I know city people streets are. Places like India, it's <laughs> insane. Oh, right, right. Well, you know, I'm talking about like, the U.S. I'm talking about okay. U.S. City streets. Okay. Yeah. 2024 is when, like, it'll be to the point where you don't have to touch the wheel. Like, okay. at all. Like, on the average drive, you get in and you say, I'm going to Walmart. It does all of it. Parking, everything. And you don't even ever touch the wheel, 2024. I think by the end of this year, I'll bet you, you can plug in something on the navigation and it'll pull up to a stop sign and it will take the turn for you and be able to navigate city streets. I think that that should be able to happen by the end of the year. Like in town, but you'll still be very vigilant about being in control of the vehicle, but it'll be able to do the stuff for you. I think like stop signs, stop lights, turning at stop lights and, and going through intersections and stuff like that. I think that will be a beta by the end of the year. Joe, what do you think? I mean, I think... Uh, I wouldn't disagree too much with your timeline. I, I've kind of given up trying to figure out a timeline. <laughs> um, 
I, I feel like maybe it's a thousand times harder to get from 95% to 99% than from one to 95%. You know, it's like mm -hmm. one of these things, it's like they didn't really realize all those edge cases and all those little tiny detail things. I mean, for example, like I was thinking the other day, I was, I was pulling out of a parking lot and I saw, um, I saw somebody in a car on the other, on the other side and they were not looking my direction. I could see that that person was looking the other direction and I could intuitively, not even consciously, but intuitively kind of figure out, oh, they're about to do this thing that's going to hit me if I don't, you know, sit here, you know, and, and, and sure enough, I sat there and they did the thing and I'm like, yeah, of course, but a car could never do that. Now I might be able to brake fast enough to keep from getting hit, but uh, I don't know. It's just little things like that that just kind of, kind of make me wonder exactly how if this is way, way, way more difficult than than we all thought, and it's going to take way longer. And that's fine. I think we'll get there. Um, but I have definitely gotten to where when Elon says, "Oh, we're going to have it in a year," I'm just kind of like, "Yeah, okay," <laughs> you know. And I don't know if that's just that he has to kind of keep that. Maybe, I don't know if he's just that optimistic or if he just kind of has to keep it in people's minds because that is, that is still a source of revenue for people to sign up for full self-driving for them. Um, but they also just changed the, the full self-driving price. Like they lowered it and then they raised it again. Yeah. Good luck. And I don't know what that was about guess. outside of just meeting some kind of quarterly numbers or something, you know? Yeah. And I think I've said it a long, for a long time now. I think we're still 10 or more years out for what you described him as 2024. Um, but in, in full, full self-driving, I, I think, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, it may be a case where we, it's not in our lifetime that we get to the, I'm in the, you know, desert uh, lost driving through, you know, the wilderness, no GPS, no internet, none of that stuff. And somehow the car can make it out. Why not I, GPS? I, I don't get why not GPS. Why? Why is that? Because if it's all vision based, um, or le like let's say, I mean, GPS in terms of uh, where you are in the world, maybe one thing, but like where a map is, like let's say there's no internet whatsoever, right? I think you can still get a GPS signal, but it's not yes. going to tell you there's a road over there, right? Right. But so it, it, you can you you could say you could still have a car know that it's trying to head to a certain heading. Okay. You know, based on compass and Fair GPS, enough. even without any data. Right. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but getting that to be like worldwide capable, I, I think, is where it really hits these massive time horizons. Or I think what you will end up doing is having cars that are trained regionally. Um, and I don't mean like Southwest versus Northwest. I mean like, you know, North America versus Asia or something like that, mm -hmm. because the driving styles and, and so much about, uh, not just the, the road markings and things, but just how you respond, uh, are, are unique to each area and each region. Um, I've talked about it before. The Mercedes self-driving team showed me what they were working on and they showed me how in China, it's not uncommon to have pedestrians on the freeways and that you don't stop for them. You swerve around them. Yeah. Um, things like that, you know, in India, if you see people, I've never been, but, uh, some of my friends that I've been and friends that are, fr I have that are from there are saying, yeah, self-driving cars will never happen here. <laughs> it's just too insane. So I don't know. I mean, I think like true, fully autonomous, like why would you ever have a steering wheel is, is maybe in my great grandkids t timeline, but not, not any, not much sooner than that. Um, and I think it comes down to, and I'm going to show you a chart here, the Pareto <laughs> principle. If you guys are familiar with the 80-20 rule, um, yeah. this is, I'm showing you a chart as an example. These actual numbers here are not relevant to what I'm saying, but the, the chart, if uh, you're just listening, it looks like um, it starts at zero and it's just kind of like a, a really steep hill that climbs all the way up to 100 going left to right. And the concept here is that it's really easy to hit that 20%, or I'm sorry, that 80% done, 80% to full self-driving would only take, in theory, 20% of the effort. And the effort in this case would be the data because that's really what drives this is the data itself, not necessarily even the machine learning algorithms or architectures and all that. Yes, those are there, but without the data, those are relatively uh, powerless, I'll say. So with all that, yes, Tesla is by far the leader, will easily be the first one to do this. Uh, but 
that that long tail, like you were saying, Joe, you know, going from ninety five to one hundred percent is like a million times harder than going from zero yeah. to eighty, uh, is is very real. And so, the the million edge cases that you have in every region, which are unique to the region, I think is where for me the time horizon is just way, 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 way down. Uh, in our lifetime, for sure, we'll have cars without steering wheels, but I think those cars will be more geofence than what you were saying, Tim, around like not just the United States, but let's say within cities, within city streets, those kind of things. So that's my view on it. I, I think um, Elon saying it again, maybe it's just more of a marketing thing to try to push people to get there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it it's not something that, and if you've ever had, if you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, there's all this hype. What do you mean? Like I sound crazy by saying this. Just rent a Tesla and drive it on navigate an autopilot in LA and you'll understand very quickly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the thing is not near ready for, uh, it's not nearly as far along, I think, as maybe the media makes it sound. And and I think um, mm-hmm. even Tesla's team would agree uh, with, you know, with, with the generally what I'm saying here. You know, they probably want to be more aggressive with their timelines, but but yeah, there are a million edge cases that are incredibly difficult to solve. So it's going to be a while. It's not It's not tomorrow. I don't think it's this year. Maybe if they can prove it out in a small testing ground, it's one thing. But to do it in the wild is, I think, a totally different thing. So, Yeah, I feel like that's also true of uh, AI in general, that like to, to get to 90% of where we, like, if you want to call it super intelligence or general AI, uh, you know, that, that took maybe 10% of the work. Cause, cause like we got all excited and we were hearing all this stuff about AI and it's kind of the same thing with full self-driving and then, and then just, I don't know, you didn't, haven't really heard much unless I'm just looking in the no, wrong th- places, you know? I, th- I think you're right. Well, uh, Ben, I do have to, I know you've always used LA as an example of the, how bad navigate on autopilot is, but I have gone from Anaheim to Hawthorne uh, using navigate on autopilot where it has to do like five different interchanges and it literally did everything perfect multiple times you know where i where where there's been where i'm just like this is incredible i didn't have to intervene it did all the right things there's weird things it did all the Mm -hmm. lane changes Mm -hmm. went around the slow cars slow down for the fast cars whatever like blah 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 blah. did everything perfect so i i know that there's it's an iterative improvement thing you know and and sometimes it reverts Mm -hmm. like i've had times where i get an update on navigate on autopilot and it is substantially worse. At the beginning of the year, I think, yeah, beginning of this year, it was ping-ponging like crazy. Like it was going back and forth between the lines. And it was so smooth. Like all of 2019, it would stick between the lines like you wouldn't believe. And then they changed some code and it started doing this, you know, ping-ponging. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. we had that solved. But clearly in doing that, they were probably working on something else. And it could even well, be them like you know, learning, they did that on purpose to learn so the car can really gauge its, you know, 3D skills with the lines and all that stuff. Um, Who knows, you know, who knows what they're actually doing. What you're describing is the nature of machine learning. And Mm -hmm. in this space, what what the, the right term, I believe, is called deep learning, where you literally have hundreds of machine learning algorithms and architectures interacting with each other. Um, And so you get, unintended consequences, right? You you, you release a, a new version that seems to improve the things that you were focused on, but there are some unintended consequences. So it's not that it's, because uh, because w- the thing that is different about this approach to developing software, I'll call it, is it's it's a bit of a black box where you feed it mm-hmm. data, you, you set up some guidelines, and then it spits out things, and you don't know what it's going to do until it's, until it's done it. Um, the more procedural style of programming or like more linear programming uh, or way of developing software that that most things are still done on is, oh, okay, um, I'm going to put a button on this page and when you click it, these set of rules are going to execute. But in machine learning world and deep learning and neural nets and these kind of things, it's not like that. Um, you set up the how these things interact, but then once you feed the data in, it it'll it may give you you know it may say hey this looks like a duck that looks like a duck but this is a moose you know it, like the the results aren't um definable or or like predictable in 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 that mm-hmm. way and and i think again that just speaks to the incredible uh, in- incredibly difficult nature of this but i will say and i've thought about this 
all the way back when I was a kid when I first got into tech, if you could snap your fingers and make every car self-driving, I think you could solve a lot of this very quickly. Because Joe, the thing you were talking about where you somehow intuitively knew yeah. that that person was gonna do a thing. Well, if that car was self-driving and could talk to my car and knew what it was gonna do, then then that problem solved. The, the cars could actually mm -hmm. do a much better job than we do as humans. But the fact is, until we outlaw driving, until it's illegal for a human to actually drive a car, that's not going to be the case. And so some that is the the most difficult time, I think, is when you have, you know, drunk people and <laughs> robots trying to interact. Like, yeah. it's a yeah. tough one. But it is amazing for what it can do already, but nowhere near, I think, what, what maybe people perceive or, or hope to see within the next year or two. That's why I kind of wonder if there's a bit of a market, uh, for lack of a better word, for um, retrofitting older even gasoline cars to to be self-driving well like but george hotz is yeah. that the guy that did yep. that comma comma is, is it yeah. comma yep comma ai oh, the name of his company i, I always get that confused with because wait what was uh was elon involved with that ever no he wasn't no but george almost got hired onto tesla okay and yeah. after the oh. during like the mobile eye transition <clears throat> open ai is the one that elon was a part of with the fake yeah. news stuff right yeah, but my friend, yeah. my friend Adam um, Getchy, uh, who is uh, kind of one of the leaders in this space, um, he had a funny tweet the other day talking about OpenAI. How uh, a couple years ago it was like this is too dangerous to unveil to the world. We must, you know, we must keep it secret. To now today, we are now licensing our software commercially available to everyone for a fee. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, oh great, here we go, here we go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure going back to uh, Tim, what you were saying about getting your car from Anaheim to uh, to Hawthorne on full self driving or uh, navigate on autopilot. If my car had full self driving on my car, what I think would happen is it would it would take all these freeways, hit all the interchanges and everything, and then just like randomly get off the road, find a parking lot, and hit a curb. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'm 90% sure that's what my car would do. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just find a curb and hit it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.